we found out in the past 40 or 50 years that life is made by and is run by molecular machines, literally machines that, that make the cell go. And when we look at these machines, we ask ourselves, where do they come from? And the standard answer, Darwinian evolution, uh, is very inadequate in, in my view. Dr. Michael Behe has devoted much of his career to the study of living cells and the molecular machines that enable them to move, produce energy, and replicate. He has concluded that these complex biochemical mechanisms could never have been constructed through the process of natural selection. Behe's observations are summarized in a theory he calls irreducible complexity. Irreducible complexity was coined by Mike Behe in describing these molecular machines. Basically what it says is that you have multi-component parts to any given organelle or system in a cell, all of which are necessary for function. That is, if you remove one part, you lose function of that system. The idea of irreducible complexity can be illustrated by a familiar non-biological machine, a mousetrap. The trap is composed of five basic pieces, a catch to hold the bait, a strong spring, a thin bent rod called the hammer, a holding bar to secure the hammer in place, and a platform upon which the entire system is mounted. If any one of these parts is missing or defective, the mechanism will not work. All components of this irreducibly complex system must be present simultaneously for the machine to perform its function, catching mice. Irreducible complexity also applies to biological machines, including the bacterial flagellar motor. All told, there are about 40 different protein parts which are necessary for this machine to work. And if any of those parts are missing, uh, then either you get a flagellum that doesn't work because it's missing the hook or it's missing the drive shaft or whatever, or it doesn't even get built within the cell. In evolutionary terms, you have to be able to explain how you can build this system gradually when there's no function until you have all those parts in place. The irreducible complexity of molecular machines poses a severe challenge to the power of natural selection. According to Darwin's theory, even very complex biological structures like an eye, an ear, or a heart can be built gradually over time in small incremental steps. Yet, as Darwin made clear, natural selection can only succeed if these random genetic changes provide some advantage to the evolving organism in its struggle for survival. As I have attempted to show, it is not necessary to suppose that the modifications are all simultaneous if they were extremely slight and gradual. Natural selection is scrutinizing the slightest variations, rejecting those that are bad, preserving and adding up all that are good. Yet some scientists doubt that Darwin's small variations could have created a bacterial flagellum when no such mechanism existed. How could something new, like a bacteria flagellar motor and all the components that go with it, how could it develop out of a population of bacteria that don't have that system? When each change, according to Darwin's theory, has to provide some kind of advantage. Imagine such a scenario early in the Earth's history. An evolving bacterium somehow develops a tail and perhaps even the pieces necessary to attach it to the cell wall. Yet without a complete motor assembly, this innovation would provide no advantage to the cell. Instead, the tail would lie immobile and useless, invisible to natural selection, which by definition can only favor changes that aid survival. The logic of natural selection is very demanding. Unless the flagellum mechanism is completely assembled and actually works,
Natural selection simply cannot preserve it. It cannot be passed on to the next generation. The important thing to realize about natural selection is it selects only for a functional advantage. In most cases, natural selection actually eliminates things, things that have no function or that have a function that harms the organism. So if you had a bacterium with a tail that didn't function as a flagellum, chances are natural selection would eliminate it. The only way you can select for a flagellum is if you have a flagellum that works, and that means you have to have all the pieces of the motor in place to begin with. So natural selection can't get you the bacterial flagellum. It can only work after the flagellum is there and operating. These challenges to natural selection are not without opposition. Proponents of Darwinian theory argue that the flagellar motor could have been constructed from parts used to build simpler molecular machines, like this needle-nose cellular pump. They contend that if the components of the pump already existed, then they could have been preserved by natural selection even before the bacterial motor arose. This theory is called co-option. It's essentially saying that evolution or natural selection at some point was able to borrow components of one molecular machine and build a new machine with some of these components. Scott Minnick has studied the flagellar motor for nearly 20 years. His research has led him to challenge the co-option argument. With a bacterial flagellum, you're talking about a machine that's got 40 structural parts. Yes, we find 10 of them are involved in another molecular machine, but the other 30 are unique. So where are you gonna borrow them from? Eventually, you're going to have to account for the function of every single part as originally having some other purpose. So you can only follow that argument so far until you run into the problem of you're borrowing parts from nothing. But even if you concede that you have all the parts necessary to build one of these machines, that's only part of the problem. Maybe even more complex, I think more complex, is the assembly instructions. That is never addressed by opponents of the irreducible complexity argument. Studies of the bacterial motor have indeed revealed an even deeper level of complexity. For its construction, not only requires specific parts, but also a precise sequence of assembly. You've got to make things at the right time. You've got to make the right number of components. You've got to assemble them in a sequential manner. You've got to be able to tell if you've assembled it properly so that you don't waste energy building a structure that's not going to be functional. Building a molecular machine has been compared to the construction of a house where workers follow a detailed blueprint and plan for assembly. The foundation of a house is poured before the walls are erected. Plumbing and electrical fixtures are installed prior to enclosing the walls of the structure. Windows must be hung before siding is applied, and shingles are attached only after plywood sheets are nailed to the rafters. So it is with the construction of a flagellar motor. You build this structure from the inside out. You are counting the number of, of components in a ring structure or the stator. And once that's assembled, there's feedback that says, okay, no more of that component now. A rod is added. A ring is added. Another rod is added. U-joints added. Once U-joints at a certain size, and a certain degree of, of bend, about a quarter turn, that's shut off, and then you start adding components for the propeller. These are all made in a precise sequence, just like you would build a building. To build a motor correctly requires a complex system of machines that coordinate the timing of the assembly instructions. But how could natural selection construct such a system? The co-option argument doesn't explain this. You see, in order to construct that flagellar mechanism or tens of thousands of other such mechanisms in the cell, you require other machines to regulate the assembly of these structures. And those machines themselves require machines for their assembly. If even one of these pieces is missing or put in the wrong place, your motor isn't going to work. So this apparatus to assemble the flagellar motor is itself irreducibly complex. In fact, 
What we have here is irreducible complexity all the way down. We know a lot about the bacterial flagellum. We still have a lot to learn, but we know a lot about it. And uh, there's no explanation for how this complex molecular machine was ever produced by a Darwinian mechanism.